what was the reason for Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother's coming to this earth? The Bible teaches us that they came to the earth to seek and save their lost children. Then, what kind of habit does our Heavenly Mother want her children to have? What kind of life is our Heavenly Mother leading us to live? Let us find out through the teachings of the Bible. Let's see Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 20. Go up to Lebanon and cry out. Let your voice be heard in Bashan. Cry out from Abarim, for all your allies are crushed. I warned you when you felt secure, but you said, I will not listen. This has been what? Your way from your youth. You have not obeyed me. To the person who continues not to listen even though he or she has been warned once, twice, or even three times, God said, All your lovers are destroyed. This has been your way from your youth. You have not obeyed me. In heaven, we had an evil habit of disobeying the words of our Heavenly Father and Mother. Because of that, we were cast down to the earth and are now experiencing difficulty in our lives. Then, if we have truly repented, what should we do? We should throw away all our evil habits that were dragging us to hell. No matter what God says to us, we should realize that God's Word is the way of eternal life, truth, and salvation and should develop a habit of believing and following His teachings regardless of the situation. Everyone, we can clearly understand what result our bad habits can bring about through the story of a death row inmate. Right before his execution, the executioner asked the death row inmate, What is your last wish? He replied, I want to see my mother. The executioner thought, since he is about to face death, he must feel kind-hearted. So he brought the inmate's mother. When the inmate asked for time to speak with his mother, he was given five minutes to talk over a desk in an enclosed room. However, suddenly he turned violent and killed his mother on the spot. The situation happened in the blink of an eye. The executioner and the officers who were nearby were greatly shocked. They brought his mother as a favor to him, but he ended up committing such an evil act to his mother before his execution. The executioners were puzzled and questioned his motive. It turns out that when the inmate was little, his family was extremely poor, and he used to steal things whenever he visited others' houses. He even stole things from the stores. Whenever he did that, his mother did not punish him because she did not want to hurt him. Since he was always ridiculed and made fun of by his friends, his mother wanted to encourage him, saying, Good job, like this. His mother repeatedly complimented him. The child thought, taking what belongs to others is not a bad thing, but something to be complimented for. From a very young age, he frequently stole things from others' houses. After he grew up, even as an adult, he was not able to fix this habit. In the beginning, he stole from people's houses, and later he was caught and imprisoned. After being released, he could not find a job and committed the same crime again. Eventually, he came to take someone's life and was sentenced to death. The officers got to know his motive for wishing to see his mother. During his five minutes with his mother, 
This is what they talked about. He asked, When I first stole from someone's house, why didn't you punish me? Why did you compliment me saying, Good job? Because of your teaching, my life is about to come to an end today. He came to have hostility toward his mother because of her twisted love for her son. When he looked back on his life, he felt that what shaped him to become a person with such bad habits was his mother's distorted love for him. Our Heavenly Mother does not teach us that way. Doesn't our Mother lead us to the righteous path by teaching us to repent of all our wrongdoings so that we can be changed to return to heaven? Once we develop a bad habit, it can last a lifetime. Since we betrayed and disobeyed all the teachings of Father and Mother in heaven, what did God teach us to do when He came to the earth? Always obey the words of God. As it is written in Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 21, we had a habit of not obeying God from our youth. We should not let disobedience become our habit. Even from this moment, we ought to practice every teaching, even the smallest ones, and learn the habits of the Holy Spirit that lead us to salvation. We should not regard even the small teaching as trivial. A habit starts small, but will eventually grow bigger and bigger. Heavenly Father and Mother showed us the habit of keeping the Sabbath and the feasts when they came to the earth to save us. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and kept worship as was His custom, that is, as was His habit. We too must change our habits to put into practice every word that comes from God. Everyone, doesn't it say in Matthew chapter 11 that we should forcefully advance to enter the kingdom of heaven? We need to make efforts. We need to transform our bad habits into the habits of the Holy Spirit that lead us to salvation. In this world, we cannot have good things that always make us smile. Our Heavenly Mother came to the earth and taught us to greet respectfully, speak words of gratitude, always be joyful and smile rather than grumble or complain. Mother said, Even if there is nothing to smile about, always have some room in your heart to smile and overcome the difficulties and trials of this life. She is educating us to have these good habits. Also, what are the 13 teachings of Mother? They are the heavenly habits that we should practice. We have to serve each other and regard others better than ourselves. Just as Abraham yielded every good thing to his nephew Lot, we should also form the habit of yielding good things to our brothers and sisters whenever we can. We should not hold on to bad habits, but form good habits that God is pleased with. Reminding ourselves of Father and Mother's will, let us look at Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. As has just been said, Today, if you hear His voice, what must we not do? Do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Hardening hearts comes from bad habits. As it is written in Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 21, You have not listened from your youth. You disobeyed my words. Where does disobedience come from? From the hardened hearts. Since people's hearts are hardened, they do not want to change their bad habits, no matter how much God tries to educate them, wanting to lead them to heaven 
and to the right path, what do their hardened hearts bring about? Disobedience. No matter how beautifully God's teachings may have been recorded in the Bible, when people do not follow them, holding on to habits that would lead them to destruction, they came to disobey God. Verse 14. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. As has just been said, today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the desert? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to what kind of people? To those who disobeyed. Everything on the earth is a reflection of what is in heaven. If we continue to disobey on the earth, how can we expect to go to heaven? Can we go there? That is why God is educating us to hear God's voice correctly through His teachings and regulations and learn the habits of the Holy Spirit that lead us to salvation under God's will. Only people well acquainted with those teachings can enter heaven. So we must be careful not to form bad habits. Those who disobeyed God ten times should reduce the number to two times. And those who disobeyed twice should fully obey. To accomplish this, we should make efforts. Otherwise, the Bible teaches that we can never enter heaven. Let us continue with verse 18. And to whom did God swear that they would never enter His rest if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to what? Enter because of their unbelief. In the end, those who grew accustomed to bad habits of disobedience were not allowed to enter the land of Canaan. It is the same for entering the spiritual Canaan, the kingdom of heaven. Then, is it easy to practice obedience? No, it is never easy for anyone. Sometimes our thoughts are aligned with God's will. But there are times when God guides us in a different direction than what we wanted. In those cases, it is difficult. Even though it is difficult, what must we do? We must make it our habit to follow God's guidance. Then, we will understand the will of God in the end. God led me down this glorious path that He prepared for me. Before, I had no idea that God had prepared all this for me. God granted us many good habits, the habit of keeping the new covenant, the habit of obeying God's word, the habit of preaching the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, the habit of praying diligently in accordance with God's will, the habit of holding on to what is good and staying away from evil. Through these teachings of the Bible, God educates us so that we can change all our habits and become heavenly citizens who can enter heaven. When we think about something repeatedly, it will be shown through our actions. It is said that the happiness index of a person is proportional to the product of their thoughts. If our mind is full of unhappy thoughts and disobedience to God's Word, and if we live 60, 70, or 80 years with these thoughts, our happiness index will be close to zero. How we lived our lives can be determined by what kind of thoughts we had. If we can always feel joyful and happy, keeping our faith in God, with a heart full of hope for the glorious kingdom of heaven that God prepared for us, then we can always overcome temporary difficulties. While living this life on earth, we may have difficulties due to lack of resources 
or numerous unfavorable circumstances around us. However, God made our circumstances a little challenging in order to grant us a more glorious future. God did not make our surroundings difficult to make us suffer in pain. God is the Almighty Creator who made the heavens and the earth. Having understood God's divine power, we ought to live the life God has granted to us with gratitude. Also, I sincerely hope that we can all think, speak, and act as a people of the kingdom of heaven and teach others to do the same. Let us rejoice in father and mother's words of truth and have good habits that can lead us to salvation instead of holding on to bad habits. Wouldn't it be amazing if members who were weighed down by the world were greatly comforted by the peace that they felt in Zion? As mother said, blessings come to those who smile, hoping that Zion will overflow with smiles and the sound of joy and delight I'd like to conclude this sermon. Thank you very much.